What's good, y'all? It's your boy Ross back here again with another video. So, we're gonna check out Jonathan Coachman on why he would never return to WWE. This should be a very interesting one. I know uh, Jonathan, uh, Jonathan uh, Coachman had a history with WWE. At one point, he was one of the announcers on Monday Night Raw. So, it should be very interesting to see why he would never want to return. Obviously, he's been doing good. You've seen him on ESPN and other shows. So, he's doing fine without WWE. But it should be very interesting to see what would be the reason why he would never return back to the company. Appreciate all the love and support you guys are showing on the channel. Let's get right into this one, man. Everything is branded. Everything I do is branded, and that I did learn from Vince. That feels like it's right out of Vince McMahon's it playbook. Is. Yeah. Do you still keep in touch with Vince? Not at all. So that, like, you're saying you've closed the door on going back to WWE. Won't ever happen. What, what Damn, specifically happened? Damn, it ever happened. So um, I went back in 2017, Yeah. Um, and I, I kind of instantly knew – this is not really where I need to be, where I want to be, but it was a nice bridge between ESPN and, and what the next full-time thing was going to be. Um, so in my personal life, I was moving to California, so I didn't really know what I was going to do next. And so I went back. It was, it was fun, but the people I worked with on the shows, A, I don't know what, what it was, but didn't really want me to be there. So oh, when damn. I got switched to the, um, the pre-show, pre that was fun. Because that was just once a month I had to show up. And that was cool. But then I missed, and part of the reason, and this is so Vince, when they called me and they said, hey, we'd love for you to come back. I said, I'm already doing golf. So I had five events already booked. Mm -hmm. And I said, I'm missing the shows that week. Like, oh, no problem, no problem. Until it was a problem. Mm -hmm. And so I missed one show in 10 years in my first run. I missed five shows in the first seven months of my second run. But I think everybody would agree, and the schedule has changed now. They were running people into the ground. Mm. Nobody should be working 52 weeks a year. Nobody. They shouldn't be having new shows 52 weeks a year. Let's be honest. Yeah. And everybody inside WWE says it. They just don't want to admit it. Uh, but no company should work that way. Yeah. Uh, I, I will say this, man. If you are trying to be in WWE, even if it's just on a, a backstage personnel type situation, producer, whatever the case is, be prepared to work because they be working people like crazy. I think there's a, a crazy stat. I think Michael Cole has only missed like maybe one or two uh, like Monday Night Raws or Smackdowns. Like he he's barely missed any work, any time off. Like when it comes to like actually supposed to be on the show commentating and stuff like that. Like which is crazy. And it shows a testament to his, you know, his um his will to, you know, wanting to be you know wanting to still be on the shows like you know you gotta want to be there to do that for that many years and only miss like one or two shows in like 20 years that's insanity so i i do believe him on that one like they commentator doesn't matter <laughs> you know ring announcer whatever the case may be you're gonna be working hard and long for wwe man but for me, what it was, I'll just be honest with you, Chris, is they came to me and they said, XFL 2020, and Vince needs somebody there that he trusts that can do it the right way. So uh, I was flying from California to New York every week whoa. to do the pre-show and because they hired a lot of people that never worked for him before. So I, I trust Vince implicitly. Like, I've done so much for him, with him. Everybody knows that. And so you, you turn in invoices, right? Well – I didn't turn mine in right away because I'd worked for him for 20 years. He had always paid me. Sure. Right. Oh. So um, COVID happens and I have a fairly large check and I hold on to it for a couple of days. I go put it in the bank. It bounces. Wow. What? It bounces. And so I called or texted um, a high executive there and I got a response. Oh, that's a lot of money. I said, I agree. <laughs> I agree. <laughs> I said, can you just call Vince? Let's take care of this quietly. No big deal. Yeah. And um, ghosted me. Wow. Absolutely ghosted me. And, you know, Vince has the amount of money in his back pocket. Yeah. You know what I mean? Yeah. And it really hit me hard. And it wasn't the, it wasn't the money. It was the, the process. You know what I mean? Mm -hmm. That And I, I sat there. I'll, I'll never forget, Chris. I sat there one day, and, and I'm sitting there going, man, they, they really bounced a check to me? Oh, I, I did get a second text. It was like, oh, that's another company. I don't think there's anything we can do. 
What? So basically telling me a, people I'd worked with for 20 years, oh, that's the XFL. It's not the WWE. There's no, but the same guy owns the two. Yeah, he right? said he, both, he owns he, both. I mean, everything was a crossover. So that to me was a complete slap in the face. Mm. And, of course. But some people there just don't care. And I'm not going to name names. It's not my style. But even to this day, and anybody that watches this interview will agree with me because it's true. There are certain people, and they're usually the ones that get the biggest bonuses, that do not care what happens below them. Uh, and yeah. I had literally done everything I had ever been asked to do. And this is yeah. how you're going to treat me. And literally, they didn't care. They did not care. And I even gave it months because they were going through. Remember, there was no, there was no shows. The company's yep. losing money. I felt for all of that. But then yeah. eight months later, when you start advertising, biggest year we've ever had financially, making all this money, and then you can't make things right. Yeah. So, again, that's why I've, I've never really talked about it. I've, I've mentioned it in a couple of interviews. But I can't, at this point in my life, I can't work for people like that. Yeah. For sure. I, I, I cannot work for people oh, who no. do not care about human beings to the point that in a very in a, in a spot where you really need it, because we all lost our jobs during COVID. Mm -hmm. And that's when you're going to decide to go, ah, let's just turn our back on a guy who's been loyal for 20 years. Mm. Like to a point, the things that I've done for that company really bad, you know, would blow your mind, would blow your mind. Yeah. I was 100 percent loyal, but they were not loyal to me. And that's it. Damn, bro. Hey, man. Yeah, nah, that ain't it, bro. That's not cool, bro. That's not cool at all. If you work hard for someone, you deserve to be compensated. I don't give a damn if it's quote unquote not not the same company. No, the same person owns the company, both companies. So he should be compensated correctly. That's messed up. Not even gonna lie to you. That's messed up. Don't know if he was ever able to get that situated because they owe him money. What you mean? Nothing. There's nothing you can do about it. What? They owe him money. And if it, I don't care if it's fucking five, ten dollars. Pay, pay the person that you asked to do something for, and have been loyal to you. And that's why it, it sucks. And you all, you guys got to remember that. You know, try to find a situation where you can work for yourself or you become your own boss if you possibly can because a lot of these companies don't give a damn about you you can be there for 20 plus years never missed a day and they will sit up there and and look at you funny if something happens you gotta gotta call out or look at you funny if you decide to move on to another company and they don't even show their appreciation you know like or don't even want to give you a bonus after you busted your ass to make their company the best it possibly could. You got to watch out for people like that. You got to watch out for companies like that. Not every company is like that. There are some companies that care about their employees and they show that in their gratitude and what they do for their employees as well. So if you're in a situation like that, keep that as long as you possibly can. But, but th for those who out there are trying to work up the ladder always be mindful of yourself first before the company because at the end of the day when it's all said and done you're a number to them and they will replace you if they need to and that kind of sucks i feel bad for uh jonathan coachman and i i am in agreement. fuck no i would never go back to wwe if they did some shit like that to me hell no nah. that's messed up but comment down below let me know how do y'all feel about uh, Jonathan Coachman's situation. Do you agree with his standpoint on never going back to the company, even if they did pay him later on, whatever the sum, the uh, the amount was? Which is, do you still agree with his decision to say, nah, I'm a, I'm a chill on uh, WWE going for it? But I appreciate all the love and support you guys shown on the channel. Road to 150k, and I'm still here on the speed of YouTube wrestling champ of the world. Appreciate y'all kicking in with me. See y'all next one. Peace.